Good morning, people. How are you all doing? Hello, Katan. Good morning. Have fun at work. I should probably stop saying have fun at work. I said have fun at work to a friend of mine recently, and he just like stopped the conversation amid, amid what was happening. And he's like, just, just, and he said to me like, just think about what you just said. Just think about what you just said to me. <laughs> have fun at work. <laughs> just made a, made a whole big point of making sure I understood that was, <laughs> that was a stupid thing to say. Good morning, John. Sigurd, hello. This spell bearing hunter is the worst one. I'm gonna assume that when his sword is powered up like that, I can't uh, can't parry him. Is there a password to join, or some quick PVP? I'll I'll PVP you, but my build's not ready. Um, it's ready enough, I guess. <coughs> uh, but I'm on PlayStation, so if you're not on PlayStation, that will be a hard ask. PS5 users and a problem for me. Okay. Come put your sign down here. I'll put my password as... Uh... Sekiro. And then put your sign here at this grace. And I'll fight you after I kill the bell bearing hunter. I think I'm just going to play the DLC on my PS5 after I really wanted to make use of my PC since it's so strong, but I feel like the port will probably have issues and a trainer might get me banned if I try to use one to create a save that mimics my PS5 saves and I don't want to risk that. I see. <clears throat> the Armored Core port from, from Software did really well, which was which was good. But typically, their PC ports aren't the best. They're not off. They're not always terrible, but they're also not the best. I'm ready. Just use the thing. Okay. Give me a second. I'll do it after my next death.
Man, I recently played some Armored Core 6 PvP and it makes me sad from software didn't remove hardlock in PvP modes. They also should have brought back turn speed for PvP. I agree with turn speed, uh, but not with hardlock. You can you can just go you can just go play your old ass Armored Core games. I ain't messing with your <laughs> with your stupid ass <laughs> um, lock ons. A no lock on bullshit. No. <laughs> turn speed, I agree with, maybe. But, uh, the lock-on, I don't. Hello. Hey! <laughs> Hard lock is defined in PvE, but in PvP it's gross. That's a spell I am not accustomed to seeing. Got me. Good job. God, that's what I'm more looking forward to in the DLCs. Most more ghost flame spells. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the, the no lock on in like armored. If they had an armored core DLC, you would, you didn't want it to have the the hard lock. And I'm like, you're not getting what you want out of that DLC. Then. <laughs> Hello, Crunchy. Nice to see you. Was that the only uh, fight you wanted, or are you putting your sign down again? Not healing is very honorable. Well, I'm assuming this is a duel. So. I do want the second 6th gen armored core soon. Yeah, go ahead, put your sign down. Uh... I also would, but I'm not convinced that uh, we're getting it. I'm not. I'm not. The the way that they've done all the other all the other armored core, um, I don't think has any bearing on whether they'll do it this way this time. It might, but but I don't think there's like a reason to think that they'll do the armored core the same way they've done it up until this point. You know, <laughs> I'm so unused to seeing Death Blight. <laughs> I know that what it does. <laughs> All right, no, we got to go again. I've just never seen anybody use Death Blight in in a PvP game, except for Lightning Death Blight. But that that's not because of that; it's because of the damage. I believe in an interview, the lead dev on Armored Core 6 said that he wanted to explore bringing back some of those more punishing mechanics in the future. I hope he holds to that. Yes, I remember that. I'm on PS5. Dance. They'd be dumb not to make use of their Armored Core engine again. I mean, I agree, but I think they're dumb for not doing sequels to a lot of the things that... that that only they do mechanics wise 
there's no sequel to Bloodborne yet, and I would very much like to play a, a game mechanically similar to Bloodborne. There's no sequel to Sekiro yet, and I would very much like to play a game mechanically similar to Sekiro. By From Software, obviously we have some other games that are somewhat like that. All right, let's go. I think we can expect another sixth game, sixth gen game in two years. I'd love that. That'd be great. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, everybody gets surprised by the range on Carrie and Pearson. Nobody ever expects it. They're like, oh, I'm safe all the way over here. Nope. I wonder if the spellbound leaks have any truth to them. Nope, you cannot seriously be still thinking about spellbound. That's not a real thing. <clears throat> That's already been debunked. You need help with the plus? I don't play co-op. What if it turns up real? There's, there's no way. <laughs> I wasn't there for the debunking. Well, basically, Zyostorm was the guy that was pushing the spellbound narrative. And uh, he's like, no, it's not real. Then what was that with Crunchy? Well, I don't, I don't just play co-op. I'll play co-op with friends for the purposes of... Um, getting invaded <laughs> and having friend time but just in general I won't I won't willingly do it I believe it. <laughs> he learned but it made him too passive it didn't make me too passive I'm not going to jump into the death fog if he's going to be in the death fog I'm going to shoot into the death fog that's not too passive hello Lil Oh, Lel's here for something other than Earth Defense Force streams. How nice.
Well, enjoy the runes to spin. What the fuck? <laughs> That's a lot of runes. <laughs> well, okay. I will happily spend those. Appreciate the commitment to theme on both of your characters. Good point, Crunchy. I'm going to need more endurance to roll with my spear on. My level is 604, I see. <laughs> I'd like you to see I'd like you I'd like to see you do this playthrough with the Tondra's tongue on. I don't like the Tondra's tongue. Um I like getting invaded, but I don't like getting invaded through the Tondra's tongue. Cuz the Tondra's tongue doesn't have a cooldown period. Hello mushroom. So it's just constantly invading without uh being able to get much progress done. You could handle it. I could handle some of it. I'm starting a new character. Which starting class do you guys recommend? Um, well, depends on what your build is going to be. I'm having so much fun this playthrough that I might, um... I might do another one. <laughs> Prep two builds for the DLC. The only other thing I'm somewhat interested in is the, uh... Oh. Oh, you want some more. Okay. Uh is doing a Crucible Knight build, because there's at least two Crucible Incantation type things that are confirmed for the DLC. So I would absolutely love Crucible Knight stuff. Because I am I think the Crucible Knight armor boosts the power of your Crucible Incantations. Could you clarify something you said in a video in a Monster Hunter combat when you said Fatalis and Latreon were harder than anything from software ever created, save for Melania? Uh, sure, I'll clarify. I think maybe even 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 including Melania, I think Latreon and Fatalis are harder. <laughs> including Melania. The Crucible Knight Wings looks like an Ash of War. That's what I thought as well. I also think that the wings are, uh, are that. All right, we ready? We ready. job. Okay, this isn't a diss at you, but the way you worded that really hindered my expectations going into Monster Hunter, because most of the game is very easy, and Elatron or Fatty were definitely not harder than Melania. No, they definitely are. They, they definitely are harder than Melania. I'm not sure what caused you to have an experience that, that you know, didn't make you think that Latreon and Fatalises are harder, but they absolutely are. <laughs> I'd rank them as hard as um, Margit. Yeah, I really disagree. I don't know what to tell you. 
that's just not uh, what's my password it's Sekiro I'm on PS5 I think most people uh, that play both Monster Hunter and Dark Souls would ag would agree that <laughs> Fatalis is certainly much much more difficult than Margit Um, I mean, forget Margit. They'd all they'd all agree that in general, Monster Hunter is more difficult than uh, Souls games. Anto says, "I'm not trying to tell us so much harder than anything Monster Hunter Niceborn had to offer." Yes, that's true. They were a big jump in difficulty. I mean, in, in in Souls games, would you say that Gerototus is harder than a boss in Dark Souls? No. No. <laughs> um, like, uh, let me let me kill uh, <laughs> let me kill Felix here, and then we'll uh, I'll I'll try and explain more about what I mean. Okay, so, um, Dark Souls is really easy, in my opinion. <clears throat> Dark Souls is a very easy game. Uh, it's like, you have extremely generous iframes when it comes to rolling through something in Dark Souls. Super generous. Uh, and that's not something that you have in Monster Hunter. In Monster Hunter, you can't iframe through things unless you get a, uh, a skill specifically for doing that. Ooh, a Radigan. That's neat. Um, you know, in Dark Souls, you can just block. You can just block everything, or roll everything, or time your rolls. Or it's, it's, I, I think it's a very easy game. It, I think it's extremely simple. And it doesn't have any um, weapon combos. You know. So here, when you fight a boss, you could very easily get away with just pushing R1. Hello, Radigan. There's no complexity to the weapons in Dark Souls. Um, there's little complexity when it comes to PvP. I see. Okay. Another, another reason that it's harder in Dark Souls Dark Souls fights last what? Three minutes at most uh, you know you fight the boss and you'll know whether you're winning or, or losing pretty quickly in Monster Hunter you could be doing perfectly fine uh, what would you guys say is, is a decent time for a hunt for the average player I think I think Eight to ten minutes, I think, is probably good for average. Um, no, twenty-five is not is not normal, Fungry. That was just you in the beginning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, like it, it could, whatever the point is, it's a long, it's a longer hunt, and the mo and the bosses get stronger closer to the, you know, they enrage, they have periods of being super dangerous. Uh, so you could be playing for much longer than you would do a fight in Dark Souls, and it will, you know, the, the hunt will end very quickly. 25 is not average hunger. Man, you, I think you just have a misplaced understanding of, of, of what would be average for people. That is not average for anybody. A, a brand new player hunting a monster for the first time in his whole life, hunting a great Jagras in Monster Hunter World, 
is not taking 25 minutes. I promise. Oh, someone new. Oh, no, no, it's, 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 uh, you again. Hello. But if you look at Electron, he is challenging, but his moves are very simple. Melania has more moves and that combo into strings. It's a more complex fight. I'm more perplexed. I'm very perplexed as to how you find Elatrian Fatty harder than anything Dark Souls ever did. Uh, I don't know. I, I think this is a very normal opinion. I think it's a very standard opinion. I think if you ask most people that are fans of both series, they'll, they'll happily admit that Monster Hunter is harder. I haven't really ever tried to give it much thought. Apart, I mean, I've given you the reasons. I've given you the reasons. The, the, the weapons are more complex. You have to know more things to be good at Monster Hunter. It doesn't take any effort to be good at, at Dark Souls. Uh, maybe you should ask somebody that you know that, that plays both why they think it's... it's they'd probably be, have an easier time explaining to you since they can respond quickly to what you say. But I, I just think that you're you're in the in the very small minority to think otherwise. Okay. There we go. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Almost 40k runes. Man, my build is going to be done by the time I'm done with this PvP session. Also, here's another thing in... Oh, what's this? Oh, I got invaded. I guess I shouldn't have put the Tantra's Tongue. 
Do you want to fight him? All right, we'll do a fight club. Let's see. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll just sit here and watch. You kill Mo yet? No, he's on the he's on the list. I'd say Monster Hunter Endgame is harder than Souls games, but learning the game is also harder. The difficulty ebbs and flows at different points. That I agree with. Uh, another thing, what I was saying before is that another reason Monster Hunter is harder is that it's very difficult to fuck up your build in Dark Souls. Like it's very difficult to be weak. Um, in Dark Souls, you put the, it's very easy. You look at the stats that your sword says it needs, you give them those stats, and you're golden. You know, other than, than having a low vigor, uh, there's very little you can do to, to mess it up. Wow. Good job. <laughs> Good job on him. Uh, but in, in, in Monster Hunter, there's there's more build variety, and it's easier to not have good skills and to not have a good build. And having an optimal build is much more difficult when it comes to Monster Hunter. In fact, I think that you should, you should probably appreciate that, Hungry, more than most people, since you said that your build sucked and was giving you 25-minute long hunts early on in your, in your playthrough. Um, so you know firsthand that it's harder to mess up your build in in Monster Hunter than it is in Dark Souls, which is part of the difficulty. Like the difficulty, I think maybe you're taking difficulty to mean a very narrow thing uh, here. It's not just about the mechanical complexity of the thing that you're fighting with once you have a perfect build and or at least a build that you're happy with. And you're like, all right, now let's fight this thing with this build. Difficulty is a lot of different factors. And I think that plays into it. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. You know, I didn't know that move had hyper armor. I didn't. Ow! <laughs> I messed up. If I had held down my piercer, that would have killed you. <laughs> All right, one one more gan. Let's keep going. Oh, a new someone new. Nice. I don't know what to say to you all. I just disagree. Look, I I don't mind that you disagree, but I think you might not be looking at this correctly. And the only reason I say that is because you disagreed for so long about Monster Hunter, whether you liked it or not. And 25 minute long hunts are just, it's just very unusual even, even to start with, even day one on any monster. So like my instinct is to assume that, they're, that you're doing something wrong or thinking incorrectly. Damn, you got me. Maybe I should have had more than 40 vigor. <laughs> have you not seen my vigor videos? <laughs> Why don't people listen to me? <laughs> Raise your vigor. <laughs> I 
But even then, if you look at it this way, that means that you can clear the monsters while not mastering it yet, versus souls will kill you if you don't. I don't think you can clear the really hard monsters without mastering it, especially the ones that, you know, we mentioned, Lantrion and Vitalis. You, you have to master those to some degree, or you're not getting through them. Um, but apart from that, you don't have to master bosses in Souls games. Like, if we're talking straight difficulty, um, using all the tools available to you, you can have a very cheesy build that will demolish monsters in, in Souls games. And it's much harder to do something like that in Monster Hunter. Fatalis is going to take you 20 plus minutes for almost everybody, unless you're speedrunning. Um, but you don't, you don't have to have any understanding of, of, of Souls monsters. I think, okay, maybe you're comparing what it's like to do a faith build. No, not a faith build, sorry. A melee-oriented build. You know, maybe you're comparing, me in your head, melee-oriented fight versus uh, versus anything in Monster Hunter. Like, you can do the... the um... Well, yeah, but then you're comparing a very narrow range of things versus uh, a very broad range of things, which isn't fair, I don't think. I could use magic, I could use faith, I could use all kinds of things to cheese. I can get summons to help me. If you help, if you summon someone for Fatalis' fight, you know, that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to do it for you. Damn it. Should I re depend less on Vigor if I'm good at game? No. <laughs> no. In my opinion, when it comes to Souls games, if it has to do with PvP especially, but, but I would say this generally, there are builds that have high Vigor and there are bad builds. Period. <laughs> That's, there's, no, there's no in between. 40 is a is a bare minimum and 60 is far far better <laughs> but I need stat requirements <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm noticing that Rada gets bodied by people who use sword anime styles. What? I don't get bodied. Get your ass in the arena. Right now, Alejandro. Get your ass over here. <laughs> Uh, okay, so would you say the Appeal of Souls is the challenge that's the same for Monster Hunter? Because I've seen online that it's not the difficulty that appeals to them, but mastery aspect. Let me read that again. So, would you say the appeal of souls is the challenge, and that's the same for Monster Hunter? Because I've seen online that it's not the difficulty that appeals to them, but the mastery aspect. For which game? Are you talking for both games, or you you, you didn't specify which game you're were referring to with the second sentence? Um, no, I think it's, it's also the challenge for Monster Hunter. I think, I think for both video games, the appeal comes from going from not understanding how to do well and failing to, you know, you're a perfect case study actually, Hungry, for why I think item restock is bad, because you're one of the few people that was bad enough in the in the early game to make full use of the item restock and really understand the item restock <laughs> um, and have a bad experience and not like the game because of it uh, that's you you're my case study for you're who I'm going to use uh, when I use an example of why the item restock is bad because you use 
Because <laughs> uh, you, you've used the item restock, and you're like, well, it doesn't matter if the fight takes 25 minutes. I, I've got three chances. When, I, when I, I can go and get all the items out of it. And so you had a bad time doing that, right? You're the perfect example of why it's stupid. <laughs> it needs to go. And it's, and it's skewing your, your impression of the difficulty because you made such use of it and because you're seeing it as an essential part of the game, whereas I never, uh, never did. And that's, and, you know, I think most people never did, and that's why they weren't having 25-minute hunt times. Teachers, <laughs> when they use it. Well, I'm not using it in an insulting way. I'm, tr I'm trying to explain and or slash understand uh, his, his issue. <laughs> What's happening? Where, where's my invasions? What's happening here? I'm not getting anybody. I want to say I struggled more on Melania versus Endgame Iceborne. However, I put in three times as many hours perfecting my Gunlance alone. Compared to my play playtime, and I also cleared Extreme Behemoth, which by your standards revokes my... Yeah, soloing Extreme Behemoth doesn't... When you can solo Extreme Behemoth on release day... Not today! Not, not today with the stuff that we have today. No, on release, when the game came out, that... The, you, don't, you don't get to talk about difficulty anymore in Monster Hunter. You're done. You have a skewed opinion of what difficulty is and what it means. Hold F. Hang on, hold F. Back. I see you're fat rolling. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to not fat roll for the rest of the fight. <laughs> like, like mess with your equipment, because you're gonna be fat rolling. You're gonna lose for sure. Okay, there you go. tendency to spam spells. They was far away. Why is he far away? Why is he letting me spam the spell in the first place? Actually, to be honest, I've never used this spell very much in PvP. This might be the first time I've ever really messed with it. Ah, oh, yeah, this is a new person. The fat rolls because I was messing with the Axe of Godfrey in my spare time. <laughs> Well, see, here's the, here's the issue, um, Hungary. I, I think we could all agree on, like, Monster Hunter has a lot of fodder, but you said Margit is harder than anything Monster Hunter has to offer, including Fatalis and Melania, and I just don't think even the most... Even anybody that would normally agree with your take, that, that in general it's harder, I don't think anybody would agree with that. Like, that's just such an off-the-wall... Off Ooh, a Crucible Knight build! My favorite. Mm-hmm. 
Is this, is this this how this fight's gonna be? I'm just gonna be chasing you like this, and you're gonna do that that running attack? That's fine. <laughs> but you're gonna get parried if you keep doing it. Come on, come on. Let me learn the timing. Come here. Do it again. There we go. There we go. <laughs> What level are you? I am level 111. Although with all these souls I've won, it'll be like 115 soon. Can you get away from the merchant? I don't want to attack him by accident. There we go. That's what I like to see. Bye, Katan. I'll see you later. What, in my opinion, is the hardest from soft boss? I think I think it's Melania. <clears throat> I think it's easily Melania. She has too many combinations of things working in her favor. From the healing to the waterfowl dance. Actually, it's just those two things that make her harder than everything else. The healing and the waterfowl dance. Two stages, full HP on both of them. Very difficult. Very difficult boss. Before her, it was probably free day since she has three full HP stages. Okay, you know what? Hang on. Lots of people complain about my free day pronunciation. Uh, three... I'm listening to the to the dialogue. Brita. That okay, hang on. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Can you hear my my audio? That's the correct pronunciation. Anyone that pronounces it differently is wrong. Hang on a second. Uh Frida. That's it. That's what he's saying. He's saying Frida. Now, I will take no more, no more criticism on this manner. It's Frida. Oh, was I saying day? Okay, fine, 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 fine. You're right. It's not day. It's da. Frida. Sir Wilhelm pronounces it free day? Frida. Okay. 
point at him, chat. Shut up. <laughs> you people are mean. I need a level up. There we go. And maybe a strength level ups from now on. Struggling on finding another build? Are there any recommendations? I am very partial to my carry and sword sorcery build. Some people... Uh, I, w I would say this carrion sword sorcery build if you haven't done it yet or a crucible knight build both of these I think will get a lot of use in the DLC ooh the crucible knight guy again I can't fight over there next to the guy. I don't want to hit him by accident. Oh, no, see, you're too close to the guy. You need to be over here. You need to be over here. I hit the guy by accident. Oh, you gotta get away from that. Out you go. Goodbye. Why star showers over stars of ruin? It's all I have. I don't have stars of ruin yet. Yeah, I, I like themed builds. I like builds that go into a theme and stick to it. My sign isn't showing up. Are you on PS5? Because we're on, we're on PlayStation. I just think it's it's like uh, on its face more difficult monster uh, Monster Hunter than Souls games are. Simply, if you take no other reason than, than the mechanical complexity of Monster Hunter is much, much higher. And it's very easy to be good at, at Dark Souls. You just, you just dodge. You, you, could, you could press the dodge button, the move button, and the R1 button the whole game and be perfectly fine. Uh, and then you have the blocking. You know, you could block very easily. Blocking takes a lot in, in Monster Hunter if you're going to have a build that blocks. <clears throat> you have to have a, tons of skills to support it. Okay. Wow, you run right out of it.
My perfect plan somehow failed. <laughs> Alright, Dance, I'm gonna try and find yours. What's what's your what's your sign? Ooh, a carry a night build. I'm sorry, whoever this is is coming. Is coming in. Sorry, Dance. You ain't coming in. Uh by the way, uh, Dance, the password's Sekiro. If you're uh trying to come in. That might be why you're not able to. Thank you, but it's my internet's fault. Just crashed. I see. 75 days? 75 days until the DLC? That sounds right. At the end of the day, I just don't like the pacing of Monster Hunter, and I wish they'd give me a latch around much, much sooner. <laughs> Maybe you should go ahead and make that video you were talking about. Uh, you said you were going to make a video explaining your feelings on Monster Hunter. Like this has been very strange. You're like you're like uh, you spent months at this point <laughs> thinking about the game, and the first like month not liking it. <laughs> Carso, sorry, I didn't know you were doing no heals. I see. Well, it, we are. It's a duel. You can come back if you like. Alright, I'm not seeing any more signs, so I'm going to proceed, assuming we're finished. I did play the first 10 hours of GU and 4U, and, the, and these hours are not as hard as the Souls games. Hungry... Maybe you, it's either that you're very good at Monster Hunter, or you're just very bad at Souls. I don't know what... To, that's just such an unusual take. It's, the, it's a flabbergasting take. GU maybe, but 4 Come on. Uh, okay. You keep bringing that up, huh? Bringing what up? Oh, okay. Talking to Fisty. Felix, I'm not getting your character anymore. What's uh, what's going on? I want to fight your carry and build.
Every time I watch a PS a Ratatosk stream, I'm somehow reminded I need a PS5. You don't. You don't need a P Oh no. Oh no. Mm mm. I've never played Bloodborne, haven't played Shadow of the Colossus in years, and I'm too dumb to use a PC. <laughs> I see. Those are those are pretty good reasons, I suppose. But all of those are PS4 games, you know. You don't really need a PS5 if those are the things that you're interested in. You could play PS4 or Bloodborne, you could play Shadow of the Colossus on PS4. <clears throat> I'll always defend saying that Sunbreak has the best beat of Monster Sisters. Anomaly monsters are peaked. Oh no, they're not. No, no, anomaly monsters are not peak. They're they're not good. They're just not good. What the hell? <laughs> what is better? Literally a normal tempered version is 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 better than an anomaly monster. Just a normal tempered monster is a. Uh, is better. You never even got to Anomaly 300. I'm not gonna grind to get to the good ones. I'm not gonna hot grind for dozens and dozens of hours to get to the, oh, well, if you just grind for dozens of hours, you'll get to the good Anomaly Monster. No, we're, we're done with that. That thing was ass. It was an ass system. They are just shiny monsters. Yes, just being harder, just a straight stat increase is good. Just a straight stat boost is a good thing. And the weird mechanics for the anomalies were not. They were spongy and annoying. Hyper monsters. Well, I never fought hyper monsters. Man, I am just not getting any... Kind of, I keep getting uh, unable to summon... I really dislike needing to do the anomaly grind. I quit entirely. Yeah, the anomaly grind is what got me to stop playing the game. I'm not grinding for the anomaly stuff. Cyberin says, I hate every remake, no exceptions. What about the Metroid Prime 1 remaster? That thing was really cool. You think Tempered's are better than Frenzy Monsters? No. Frenzies are super cool. Frenzies are really great. But we weren't putting them up against Frenzy. We were putting them up against Anomaly. <laughs> That's between a remaster and a remake. I don't consider, for example, the Demon Souls remake to be substantially different than the Metroid Prime remaster. They're very, they're very similar. They redid all the textures. They did redid all the graphics. Um, like the, you, you can make an argument for stuff like the, um, the. Uh, Anyway, I, I think the Metroid Prime Remaster did much of the same of what the Demon's Souls remake did, and that's considered a remake.
Risens are better than arch tempered. What the hell? <laughs> Fisty, are you perhaps a portable title enjoyer over a um, normal uh, mainline game enjoyer? Because that would explain much of uh, what's going on. Also, yeah, you liked Risen monsters. I didn't. Di I didn't say I didn't like Risen monsters. They're fine, but they're not. They're basically like arch tempered. They're not. What, what, what's the difference between an arch tempered and a Risen monster? It's a stronger version that gets new moves. What's what's the real? What's the difference? Risen has more unique monsters because they have more mechanics around them and more new moves. Rada, why did you parry? I don't know. Like, you guys have to understand, this is the only time I play, and you guys saw me start parrying on this stream, a few, like a bunch of streams ago. I'm still not, still not great at it. Oh, why didn't you parry? Because I'm learning how to. I don't like parries in any game ever. I just want to dodge. I don't agree with that. I've, I'm I'm now pro parry now that I've learned how to do it better. Thank you for the super chat, Paul. Bro, you don't want to be there at night. Yeah, I know. I I've, I've been trying to kill that guy. He's got me stuck a bit. Pet of mana. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for the super chat, Paul. Guys, how do I get rune fast to level up? I am new to Elden Ring. You don't. You just play. And get runes as you as you play. What's your PC specs? I'm playing on PlayStation. I also don't know what my PC specs are. No, don't tell him! Stop telling him! <laughs> Let them, let them suffer. Don't tell them things. All right, I should probably progress. Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop the, the PVP.
I don't think Ray Roll is too hard. This guy just does not let me heal. How is he harder here than when he was in this in the in his actual boss fight? Damn it. I actually really liked this particular enemy's movesets. I wish that the sword that he drops had a moveset similar to what he actually does in game. That sword was the greatest disappointment in the game. Yep. but the ancient dragons are cool. No, the ancient dragons are not cool. The normal dragons that you fight are way better than the ancient dragons. The normal dragons are actually very similar uh, in feeling to a monster hunter battle. Like, uh, yeah, the normal dragons are way better. Fuck. The ancient dragons are crappy. They're a bad fight. Yeah, you can barely hit the, the ancient dragons anywhere on the legs. That's my main problem with them. You can't get to any of their... their can't get to their head. You're just slapping at their leg the whole time. Well, since I've learned how to parry, I might as well make use of it now. I like the regular dragons a lot. The ancient dragons are super annoying just because of how they move their head. Exactly. If it's not the lich dragon... <laughs> I like Placidisex and I like the Lich Dragon, but apart from that, I don't like any of the, the Ancient Dragons. What did I play in Monster Hunter? In Monster Hunter World, I played Longsword, and in Sunbreak, I played Insect Glaive. And in 4, I played Insect Glaive. Thank you for the super chat, Paul. Reddit, could you explain what is world tendency? It's a mechanic from Demon Souls. 
where if you died while you were alive, the world tendency would go up, and if you killed bosses without dying, the world... Sorry, the world tendency goes up if you if you kill bosses without dying, and it would go down if you died while alive. And once it was fully down, the game would be harder, and black spirits would appear, and cool little interactions with NPCs would also happen, where you'd get invaded by black spirit NPCs that were very tough. What about Len Sex? Len C Sex? Is that how you say her name? Uh, the glaive was cool, but again, she's an ancient dragon, so I don't have a strong opinion on her. I still don't know who killed Grand Sex, or for that matter, did they have a Dragonator? It was, uh, it was Godwin. Godwin killed Grand Sex. I think. Godwin didn't kill Grand Sex? Who killed Grand Sex then? He fought Fortis Sex and became friends with him. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he's the one that defeated Grand Sex. No, wait a minute. No, Grand S didn't Grand Sex attack? Hang on. Let me look at the thing. Did he attack after the war was already over? My memory's not working. No, it started before the war. This marked the dawn of the war against the ancient dragons. It doesn't say who did it. But it was totally uh, Godwin. <laughs> who else is going to be able to do it? And it would follow the theme of Miyazaki, where the dragon-slaying hero becomes friends with dragons, like uh, in Dark Souls 1 and 3. Wasn't that the Nameless King? Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. And the Nameless King used lightning as well. I don't think it was him, but sure. Well, do you have a alternate suggestion? I can't imagine who else in the capital would have been able to do it. This tower is going to get me stuck again, I can tell. I remember not figuring out what the tower... How to get into the inside of the tower for a while.
I just don't get how Grand Sex ended up on the end of a giant spear. Is he impaled in... I don't think he's impaled. I think that's his spear. And he's using it. I don't think that spear's used against him. But I... I don't remember. It does look like the lightning spears ancient dragons use. Yeah, and the weapon is called the Bolt of Grand Sex. Yeah. Yes, sir, you passed the same structure three times. I don't remember how to do this tower. Shush. Leave me be. I wonder if we'll get more base game lore. We absolutely will get more base game lore. 100%. They've already confirmed that they're going to talk more about America uh, in it. America is the biggest mystery, in my opinion. Okay, I see. I see. Mm-hmm. I get it. Want more ghost flame spells? I think everybody wants more of their favorite archetype because most most of the spell archetypes didn't weren't fleshed out. I like the blood star one. What do you have? Two two spells that synergize poorly with existing stuff. That seems like a hard thing to make. That does not look like an easy jump, but I think that's the right way. There we go. I think the death uh, Blight people could use at least one more spell. Uh, the Blood Star people could use some more stuff. Blood Flame in general also, apart from the Blood Thorn stuff, could, could use more spells. Uh... And of course, at least three or four new Carrion Sorceries. That's just, that, that's just given. That's just a matter of course.
Never understood mundane scaling. Mundane scaling scaled with your lowest stat. So you had to upgrade all your stats to make it scale. Hello, Zo. When are you playing Helldivers 1? Never. I'm never playing Helldivers 1. I've got two to play. Carrying katana. Oh my god, that would be so cool. Just do a quick draw attack, and that's the spell. You might fall in love with. Yeah, I think that I might fall in love with any of. Uh, it, it could very well be that I'm doing all of this in vain. And I get to the DLC and I see a new weapon or thing and just switch my build uh, to accommodate it. I could easily see that happening. Isn't that just Moonveil though? It is, but I've used Moonveil too much. I have to never use it again or I'll, <laughs> or I'll start to hate this game. Parkour is always this weird. Jesus. No, no, no. Mm -mm. There we go. Hello, Simone. Maybe the next run do a dex build. I've already done a dex build. Dex builds them what I've played the most of. I think it's time to stop with the dex builds. Even when I play a strength build, it's actually just a dex build because I'll just two hand a katana and make it strength, and that's what makes it a strength build. Would you like more destined death weapons too? Maybe one. I don't want it to become overpowered because it's the kind of thing that only functions in PvP. So it's a PvP only weapon.
No, I'm not turning into a Dex hater. I just <laughs> have had enough. <laughs> I've had my fill. I gotta do something else. Dust and death is good in PvE? Well, it, it, you might be thinking of something else. I'm talking about... I'm talking about death blight. Death blight things. That only works in PvP. If you're talking about black flame stuff, that's that's different. Will there be new great runes? I do think there will be new great runes. They kind of showed a rune in the trailer. I don't want advice, Felix. Don't tell me things. Okay, this is where I was already. Oops. Maybe I'll find the turtle here. <laughs> I blame Felix for that. That's all his fault. I would have found that damn turtle. I don't think getting new great runes would mean much if you can't use them for New Game Plus. At least for the DLC, you'll have more opportunities to use the base game runes. What do I mean you wouldn't be able to use them for New Game Plus? Of course you'd be able to use them for New Game Plus. Yeah. 
if there would be new endings. There was never a question. There's there's no new endings. I'm thinking there was a translation issue. I don't think there's a, a translation issue. There's no new endings. Flame curve sword really bad. Yeah, that's interesting. Almost all the swords that you see enemies wielding, you can, you can loot. Sometimes it's a percentage chance, but you can usually loot them. So it's kind of weird that you can't in this case. Well, that's just ridiculous. That <laughs> it's a big fall. Okay. I require a beverage. I'll be right back. You know, I really wish there was a way to have more stuff that my character can do. Because I want to be able to... to <laughs> I want to be able to parry and block and use my weapon's Ash of War at the same time. I want to be able to do all of those things while one-handing. <laughs> and maybe also cast spells. <laughs> <laughs> why can't why can't I have something like that? <laughs> yeah, there are not enough buttons. That is the problem.
Okay, Godskin. I'm going to stick around this guy for a while. I want to learn his parry timings, and I also want to hear this song. So we might be here a while while I learn it. I have one shield for parrying and one shield with no skills. That works for me. Yeah, this works fine, because I, I can do the Ash of War with the um, the Catalyst. But still... Damn it. Go away. Getting these excuses in early. Shut up, carrot. Damn it. That boss is better than the bell hunter? The bell hunter is way easier than this boss, I think, when it comes to parry timing. These bosses move weird. I've always struggled to understand what what their timings are. I hate these guys so much. Seriously. I was stuck here in with the Black Blade boy by Gurak for so long. <laughs> I think that Black Blade guy in front of Gurak could probably kill Gurak. We got a god skin trio. <laughs> I don't. I mean, it'd be funny, but uh, no, let's not do that. Nope. I hate these guys. 
I don't understand their timings at all. They don't move like people. Does Ronnie also have a noble concept that's being degraded? If so, it's her. Is it her being solitary and lonely? See, I don't think so, actually, because their noble, their noble concept, the heroic concepts, are degraded by the great runes, and she cast off the great runes. I gotta learn his parry timing more for when I do the God Skin Duo fight in uh, Faramazula. Because if I don't learn it now, it's just gonna be hell trying to get it later. Melania is also gonna be fun. Her parry timings look easy though. I, I, a lot of people tell me, oh, her parry timings are hard, but they don't look hard from a distance. Eldering needs covenants in a Darkwood Forest covenant. I miss the endless PvP in Darkroot. Yes, they do. They need a place to defend. I don't know if I can parry his jump attacks, but I'm going to keep trying, even though I don't think you can. Oh, you can't? You can't for sure? Alright, that makes sense. Also, don't tell me things.
Oops, best way to be spoiled by chat. There's no way to get not spoiled by chat. People have varying opinions of what a spoiler is. And plus, I've already beaten the whole game, so many people don't think that it can be spoiled. And it's not even a spoiler. Even I don't think it's a spoiler. I just don't want to know. Damn it! My buddy and I went to bed at 4 a.m. fighting this guy at level 30. That's six hours of seamless co-op. <laughs> Dash attack, I think, also can't be parried. Seems very inconsistent.
Damn it. So yeah, do I plan on playing Rebirth? No, I do not. I don't like it. Red always has bad taste. Oh, John, I'm, I I did not think you would like Rebirth. That's a shame. No, really, I'm, I'm actually a little sad. Disappointed. <laughs> my, my impression of you has gone down. Did you beat it or not? I didn't play it. I didn't like how the story was going, so I just watched the ending. Gameplay's fine. I just think the story's not good, and the ending's bad. Which is like the only- it's like the only thing I care about that game. <laughs> Oh, the gameplay's good. Okay, yeah, the, the gameplay's good. I agree with you. It's just so. I'm not playing Final Fantasy for the good gameplay. Trigger's Masterpiece? Yes. Yes, it is. Great game. Hello, Nurb. Final Fantasy games do I like? I like 7, 9, 10, and 6. I'm 100% sure that move can't be carried. I'm so certain. I gotta stop trying. John says, I think I know why Rada got filtered by Reaper's story, because the ending getting spoiled for him was actually what got me stoked for the game. Like, I thought they would screw it up, but... Up, but according to what I've heard, they didn't. But I'll let you know once I plan it. 
I ended up despising Final Fantasy 16, despite being surprised to hear you dropped it. So the same might happen with Rebirth. But I like it. But I did it because you love the story. I don't even think you love the story. I don't think you do. I don't think anybody really loves the story. They like the characters. They like the writing. Everybody that likes the story doesn't really like the story. They don't like what's happening. They like the, the character interactions. They like the writing. They like the emotional set pieces, which are all, I admit, pretty good. <laughs> but you don't like the story. You don't care about the story. I don't think people... Uh, <laughs> I don't think people understand or care to understand the story. Are you projecting? A little bit. <laughs> yes. They like Tifa's huge ass honkers. And there's much to love there. There's much to like about that. Absolutely. You know, John, no matter how many times you straw man my position on Zelda, that's not it. It's not what I said. <laughs> and I think you know that by now. So you can keep saying that, but that's not what happened. Did I make a video on Final Fantasy 16? I made a video expressing my excitement after playing the demo, because the demo made me think I would really like it. Uh, but then I didn't like it very much at all. And so I just deleted that video and, and uh, that was the end of it. The demo was the biggest bait ever. I really just thought, um, I really just thought that that demo was very high quality. I was like, oh my god, this is such a good, this is such a, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna like Final Fantasy again, like I did back in the good old days, the Final Fantasy X days, Final Fantasy VII days. But uh, no, no. I have a similar view, like the characters except for Sephiroth and dislike the plot. I don't think they have the ability to write themselves out of this. I think that the... the See, the thing is, I just think I don't like Kingdom Hearts. And I think that this is just the same Kingdom Hearts stuff. I don't like how metaphorical everything is. I don't like how the fights at the end... ...are... symbolic <laughs> it's not um it doesn't matter how hard cloud is going to hit this the the sephiroth at the end of these two games uh because it's not it's not really there it's just it's symbolic <laughs> everything's symbolic and it makes it, it's gross <laughs> i think it's gross Do I like Xenoblade Chronicles 1? I do! I like Xenoblade Chronicles 1 a lot. Do I feel the same? No, I really like the original Final Fantasy VII. The, I have a lot of issues with this one, and part of it is because it's so referential. It's so self-referential. 
It's so much about being a remake. <laughs> oh, oh no. Do you think we'll see the Liza P reveal in June showcase? They're constantly putting Liza P on sale. It'll come this year for sure, so I'm not I'm not terribly worried exactly when Liza P DLC is coming. The only thing I'm I'm game wise, the only thing I'm really interested in is uh, the Elden Ring DLC, the Liza P DLC, and the Remnant 2 DLC. Like I think I'm for the rest of the year I'm pretty much done. I can't think of something that's coming out still that that's gonna grab my attention. <laughs> so this is the D the year of the DLC for me. Judas, no, I'm not terribly interested in it. It looks okay, but uh, it has to win me over. Nothing I've seen makes me think it's going to be an anything other than another failed Bioshock attempt. Because all the Bioshock attempts, I believe, are failures. Might as well go play the original System Shock, System Shock 2, and Bioshock 1, and then you're good. Uh, except for, uh, what was the one in space? The one in space is probably the best one. Was it Prey? You're thinking of Prey, yep. Yeah. That one was great. Ken Levine has been making the same game for nearly 30 years now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, No Rest for the Wicked. Yeah, that one looks interesting. Yeah, n never mind. I forgot about No Rest for the Wicked. But that one just comes out in early access, and I'm not an early access guy, so I might get it. I might not get it. Uh, I might wait for the full release. Do I think Bioshock 2 is bad? Yes. I think Bioshock Infinite is the worst. Uh, Bioshock 2 was like okay, but Bioshock 1 did it best the first time, and I don't think they ever recreated it. It was far worse than one, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah, but like, yeah, I agree. It was it was okay. Infinite, I just didn't like at all. I don't know what, where, like it was just such a big drop in quality from the first game to Infinite, in my opinion. What do you think of the Black Myth Wukong game? It's got me interested, but it's one of those things where it could it could just be bad. The, the gameplay looks pretty nice, but I don't know yet. I need to see more of its... Uh, I need to play it, honestly. If they'd give me a demo, I'd have a better idea. Shock Infinite Castle move not expel on game credits. 
Yeah, I never understood where all the praise for it came from. very interested in Wukong, but also very wary. Yeah, that's basically my my stance. It looks very cool, but I can't tell without more info. God damn, this guy has a great song. Holy shit. It's really hard not to like that song. Ooh. What are the chances the Elden Ring DLC with will flop? None. Zero. There's only one company that I have absolute faith in, and that's from software. I'll stop believing on them when they give me something I don't like. If the DLC is bad, I quit gaming. Yeah, bas basically that. <laughs> Bethesda is the one for me. Wait. wait. Trackon. Tracktorn. Are you trolling? That was a that was a funny joke. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Had me worried there for a moment there. I wasn't about to stand for none of that. <laughs> Right. Did I do this, boss? I don't think I did. I don't think I did this area. Tractor not liking Elden Ring, which I believe it's you that doesn't like Elden Ring. That doesn't make you base. That just means you're wrong. Uh, okay. Here we go. Could the DLC put Elden Ring higher on your FromSoft ranking? Absolutely. Like everyone likes to repeat, because it's true, uh, From Software's DLC usually are a very high quality and better than the main game that they're from. And I'm expecting something like that from the DLC here. Godwin's theme idolism I I also don't know about Godwin because I don't think Godwin 
had a chance to get his great rune because he died and that's what precipitated the events of the shattering. Uh, in several interviews, inter Miyazaki talked about how the, the, the great runes of the Elden Ring were specifically the things that corrupted the demigods. And I don't think he ever had a great rune because he died before the war started. How would the Sekiro scaling effect status build Bleed and Scarlet Rot would just not work? I think that how it's going to be, it's just a percentage downgrade of all your damage. So any damage that you do, it'll just be percentage downscaled. So that's, that's what I'm thinking will happen. In this way, really high level builds will be able to still be weak and have to, you know, level up in the, in the DLC with the DLC mechanic. Elden Ring DLC will make will probably make this my favorite Souls game. I, I think the potential exists. I still have Dark Souls One and Demon Souls um, as my number ones. <laughs> I alternate between which one I like better between those two. But depending on how good the DLC is here, I could see this being number one. Did Miyazaki mention any estimate to how long the DLC is? I don't remember. I think I may have made a video on that. Uh, let me remember. He did say that it was around the size of Limgrave. But that could be, that could be anything. That could mean anything. Which one has the most interesting world between Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls? Hmm. It's a tuppy. Yeah, I'm not sure. No way everything in that trailer fit in Limgrave alone. Uh, it could be that he's not telling the truth, or he's not uh, he's not um, emphasizing it. But it could also just be that he meet like Limgrave's a big area. Uh, it's not just. West Limgrave. Limgrave is very big. It includes the Weeping Peninsula and the forest to the west. I mean, to the east. So that's a sizable, sizable area. Is Limgrave the biggest region? I don't think so. I think probably Altus is the biggest region, since it includes all of this. But Limgrave is pretty sizable. Like, look at this. No, actually, Lyernia is absolutely the biggest. Look at Lyernia. Lyernia is huge. Look at this shit.
But no, Limgrave's big. Look at all this. There's a lot to Limgrave. And it could be more densely packed, so they could fit a lot more in that area. Who knows? Oh, God damn it! did I fall off of the thing? I did. I fell off of the thing. Do I miss Dark Souls 1 invisible walls? Uh, Eldering has invisible walls. But none that cap areas like Ash Lake. That's true. I'm just doubting whether their chest is a mimic or not. They might make a chest a mimic in the DLC, and I won't be used to it, so I'll probably get cut. I'm not going to check. I'm going to assume there's no mimics <laughs> and hope that there are. Still pissed about that. I'm kind of pissed about a lot of things Dragon's Dogma 2 did. <laughs> you know, Fisty, before the game came out, you were you were Dragon's Dogma's two strongest defender. You you were the guy. <laughs> And any times there was like a criticism about it pre-release, you were you were there handy with a with a retort. <laughs> I don't know how I went so many years without pairing. How did I go so long without learning to parry? It's so much fun. downgrading the music. <laughs> oh look, it's my favorite. And I mean that unironically. This is unironically my favorite. <laughs>
Did I get anything out of that? I don't I don't think I got anything out of that. I guess I did. Whatever. Yeah, 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 I got it. The the rot. <laughs> See, everything's fine. Alright, I'm almost out of places. I've got all of the Altus, all of the... I guess I'll go at least get the Moonlight Sword. I should at least do that. Even if I don't plan to stick with Ronnie. I might change my mind. What's my favorite waifu? Uh... Probably Rogerica. Or Frederica, what's her name? The one in the... The Spirit Ashes Girl. I don't visit her very often, so... I don't remember what her name is. The actual with an actual human body and isn't afflicted by anything nasty. What a weirdo. I know! <laughs> what happened to Raya? Well, Raya's cute, but she's like not waifu material. Okay. All of this is done. Everything's done. Everything's done. I think. Am I preparing for Pelham Zero? I'm just basically getting everything before I go over there.
Hello, Reckless. Is there anyone else planning on not burning the Erd Tree before the DLC? I kind of have to burn the Erd Tree if I want to be really prepared for the DLC because Alexander's Jar is over there. I guess I could get someone to drop it for me, but like, there's a bunch of stuff in Faramazula I want, including, uh, you know, the, the, the bell bearings that I'm going to need to upgrade my weapons all the way. And I'm not convinced that there's going to be a substantial amount of new stuff to do. If I ever get a chance to meet Miyazaki, what would I ask him? I don't know. That's a good question. Jesus. <laughs> right, I would ask him for marriage. <laughs> That's also a good proposition. Damn it. I wish there was a thing all the way over there. I don't want to do this right now. Uh, instead, let's go back to the mountaintops and do mountaintop things. If I was going to do anything, I might want to do the Florenzied Flame. Because I'm, there might be Frenzied Flame interaction down the line. Actually, I should probably do Castle Soul. That's a good idea. Castle Soul.
but I forget to use my Ash of War all the time. Well, I, I'm not going to forget to use my Ash of War all the time. I use it all the time on bosses. At least. It's not terribly good for PvP, but I also have this thing, and this thing's Ash of War is monstrously strong. Weapon of choice from Merlania. I've only ever beaten her with twin long swords, uh, but I will probably beat her with this this time around. The thing that confuses me the most about Dragon's Dogma 2 is what was as soon as vision that he didn't get? Dragon's Dogma 1's base game has a fairly good endgame and more unique monsters. What does Dragon's Dogma 2 give that Dragon's Dogma 1 doesn't? <laughs> um, nothing substantial. I, I, do, I just keep th I keep telling people this is a remake. It's what it is. I don't think it's substantially different than, than the first game. And not objectively better. I don't think it's an improvement. What we got was like, um, things like... Beastron. You know, I think the things he was talking about were things like the Beastron. That's what he's talking about. That's what he cared about. Beastron and elves. That's what he he was he was referring to. God damn it. One thing the DLC needs to give us is a way to farm old fangs so that we can make old fang pot things. Or any of the items that you can craft with old fangs that you can't buy. Just let us buy it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Also, the elf settlement was kind of not good. I mean, it was okay, but like one elf settlement, a whole language for this one area, this tiny village with nothing to do in it, except for one quest line, that was annoying. Like, that was very annoying. It would have been very interesting if there was 
elf settlements peppered around the area, and your pond would have been more useful if it had the elf language specialization. As it stands, it's just not it's just one self-contained thing. That was very annoying. I think what Dragon's Dogma 2 does significantly better is the structure of questing and out of combat pawn inter the out of combat pawn interactions. Man, <laughs> it's not that I disagree with that, but you're lo like now you're looking for things when you're when you have to go and look for well you know the out of combat pawn interactions. Those were nice. <laughs> those were something they did better. <laughs> yeah, the quests were better. I liked the quests, but. But god damn it, the out of combat pawn interactions. Where's my uh where's my cool layer armor system? Instead of taking it away, they should have added to it. They should have had a leg slot for each leg. <laughs> a pauldron for this leg, a pauldron for this leg. Uh or not pauldron. Uh grieve. Oh, we're taking away your your armor slots so that there's more armor variety at the end game. Do you really think there's more armor variety at the end game? I don't think there's more armor variety in the end game. I go to the rift and I see the same shit that I saw everywhere else. Everybody's wearing the same thing. Because the problem wasn't wasn't the the problem was that the stats the you made the stats. The problems were the stats. You should have made uh, low tier stuff more end game viable. Uh, in Dragon's Dogma 1. That was the issue. No, we want people to wear whatever they want. Then don't make something objectively better. Uh, by uh, the out of combat pawn interactions I meant including stuff like being able to set quests incentives that was nice that was cool I still think that this is I think this is still reaching like okay here are the things that that the second game did better and the, the, the things aren't ever like huge major things it's like it's it's not the story it's not the um it's not necessarily the combat, the enemy variety, the, the end game bosses. It's never, it's never that. It's always like, okay, let's find, let's find the things that we actually do like better. 
and they're never substantial. Pawns and questing are major, in my opinion. Combat and story and music are also major. I agree with the questing. I don't think that the interactions you're describing are on the same level of a story and enemy variety. Major, you know, we can we can quibble about what the word major means, but I don't think that they're on the same tier. If the pawn system was kept exactly the same in Dragon's Dogma 1, and instead of the pawn system improvements that we got in the second game, they made improvements to any of the other things that we've listed. For example, enemy variety, story, um, end game, any of those things that we complain about. If you took it out, put it back how it was, and it gave us one of the other things, it would have been better that way, rather than the, the upgrade that we got to the pawn system. I know this is copium, but is it possible that that Dragon's Dogma 2 DLC is going to be Tower to the Moon and it was just too big to... No! <laughs> no! Stop it! You've got that moon copium still. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe it is. I, I don't know what they have planned for the DLC. I hope it's good. My only worry is that the DLC is self-contained. That's the only thing I don't like about the idea. I want this DLC to not be self-contained. Wow. I want the DLC to have influence on the main game's enemy variety. So if they add a bunch of new stuff, they need to include that stuff into the main game, switch things around, not have just Cyclops everywhere.
Something small that would have alleviated the enemy variety issue without actually increasing the quality would be non-static spawns. Yeah. But I guess that would have messed with their forager perk, because the forager perk just tells you... Uh, forager specialization just tells you where the thing is. Bro, how does he know I'm here? How does he know I'm here? How? Oh my god. I hate this guy. What? When does it stop? What a beast! Holy shit! You think he's done, but he's not. Does he even drop anything? I believe he drops that armor that he's wearing. And he's the only thing that drops that armor. I believe. It's the best night trip. I don't even think I like his armor all that much. It's okay, but I don't think it's like that much better than even the normal Banished Knight stuff. That flip's gonna get me for a while. I've been trying to parry him. Stay back. <laughs> Dude needs stamina. He needs a stamina bar. That's what he needs.
Okay, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna shoot him from here. That's what we're gonna do. I fucking thought of that just just before it happened. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! I don't understand. That seemed correct. Those parry timings seemed fine. <laughs> Is that an eight string attack combo? <laughs> yeah. I just I just am under the impression he can just keep going if he wants to. He only stops as a courtesy. Fuck you, old man. Oh my god, he's still alive. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah, he's him. <laughs> That's the guy. Him or Melania, who would you rather have heal from the attacks? Melania, for sure. I don't think Melania is that that difficult. She 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 took me a long time, but I, you know, once once you had her down, she wasn't that bad. It was just the waterfowl dance, to be honest. That still is difficult to dodge for me. But apart from that, it, I thought it was she was fine. Wow. I don't even know why I'm still alive. You should just kill me with that. That was bullshit. That was incredible. I bet Tenemura designed this area. <laughs> oh. 
Oh no. It's all your fault. Are you going to play Archstones? No, I'm not. I'm feeling like doing Moog. I think it's Moog time. thing here? Did I never get it? I guess I never got it. So he's probably still there, offering it up. Yeah, I finished Vara's quest. I just, I guess I never talked to him the last time to get the thing. What's my favorite ending lore-wise? They all, they all kind of suck. <laughs> Probably gold masks. A little boring, but um, probably gold mask. Oh, another thing. You should. A medal granted by the new Mogwin dynasty. With the power to I've got, but you mustn't. The meeting must win. Luminary, we must. I like using it right in front of him as soon as he gives it to you. It's funny. He's like, bruh.
I really don't think people understand the implications of gold masks ending. All right, well, what do you think the implications are that people don't understand? Hello, Hoagie. How you doing? No, that lump's not worth it. I'm not. I'm not attacking that lump. It takes too long. I'm going to be sure to have as many of these keys as, as I can for the DLC, because they're probably going to get used there. Simone says, I think people misunderstand that what he's, his overall intentions are. Some people think his ending stops the Outer Gods, but it's more talking about Merica and the Demigods. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he doesn't stop the Outer Gods. But I think that's... I think... Uh, whether... I think people get that he's talking about Merrick and Radagon specifically, and things like them. The the Empyrean type deities. Gold Mask is trying to perfect something inherently flawed that's just an ideal naivete ending. Uh kind of. He's doubling down. And I think that that's what people don't get. Yeah, I don't think the Golden Order can be fixed because order can't be fixed, you know. Um, that's like the whole point of the game. The The original Erd Tree was supposed to be perfect and eternal. You can't have uh, an imperfect and eternal thing. And if you insist that something's perfect and eternal, it has, you know, all of these problems arise. I don't think the ideal is inherently flawed, then you're not understanding what Miyazaki's been trying to tell you for four games, if you don't think the ideal is inherently fl flawed. basically punishes the gods uh, for the shattering and then continues the fading golden order religion including the impression and shit there's no evidence that he does continue the the oppression um, there's some evidence that he doesn't because he doesn't like how the uh, how the golden order fundamentalists treat those who live in death so there's there's some evidence that he's not he wouldn't do that 
like, and, and he thinks that the reason that the Golden Order isn't perfect is because it's ruled by imperfect deities that are just as fallible as, as normal men. My, my thing with the, with gold masks, here's, here's my interpretation of gold masks ending, um, so far. Really, there's, there's not much information. Like, there's almost nothing. So we're all running on impressions. But this is the, this is mine. Um... He has correctly, he correctly infers that the problem with the Golden Order has to do with the meddling of the people in charge of the Golden Order and the fact that they won't admit that it's imperfect. He finds the imperfections of the Golden Order and his rune is his attempt at correction. It's like, all right, it, these, are, these, pe these gods are the problem. Uh, the Golden Order isn't perfect. Here's my attempt to make it perfect and... and the influence of these lesser deities are going to go away. I think that his order would be better, but his it's still not... You can't perfect the order, because you can't perfect any order, because you have to... They're, they're, they're symbolic for order in general, in real life. So it's like... You've identified that this person or this this practice in a government institution is bad. Okay, and then you try and fix it. But then if your solution is that now it's the perfect order, you know, now the order's perfect. Now we've got it. We've got the correct solution. Well, then you've just fucked up. And I think Gold Mask has fucked up. He's he's the equivalent of, of someone that is like, well, if I was in charge, <laughs> if I was in charge uh, and my ideals were in charge, and um, the interference of these other people wasn't allowed, then the, the order would be perfect, and then everything would work. That's him, and he's, he's mistaken, just like every other deity was mistaken, because you can't have a perfect order. So that's my, that's my interpretation of Gold Mask. Probably things would be better, because he is right about the, the demigods, and the gods um, being just as fallible as men, but so is he. And it wouldn't, it would end up the same. But if his solution is to always allow new information to reshape the Golden Order, so it can't have contradictions, that would also fit with the establishment of his questline. Okay, but even that, even if that is the, the, the solution, it's still not going to work. Because the whole point of like every Souls game, and Sekiro, and Bloodborne, is that you can't have a perfect governmental system. That's, ba that's, basically, that's basically the entire point of everything. Things are destined to rot and fade away. Because in Dark Souls 1, they already had that system, the system that you're, um, that you're talking about. When the fire fades, 
it needs to be rekindled. And so they had a system. Gwyn came up with a system to rekindle the fading fire. They didn't just let it die out. They rekindled it and they used the, the bodies of, uh, the souls of dead old gods to rekindle it. And then finally the hero, the, the souls of champions and, and heroes that upheld that same order eventually in, at the end of Dark Souls 3. So it's like a process of, of um, rebirth. It's similar to like a government election. You know, you have an election and, and people vote for something and the order changes from one order to another order. Um, but it's not a real solution because everything decays and even the system itself that you that you put to to try and correct for errors is still going to be full of errors and will fall eventually. Hello, Rex Garden. I never figured out if Ronnie's ending would be some kind of absence of order, or an order that will never be known, or something else entirely. Uh, there can't be any absence of order. Her, hers is an order, but she's like, she doesn't, she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to directly mess with people. So her order is a distant order. She's far away. She's so far away that it's, it's, um, hers is an order that it's hard to believe that, that she exists at all. So it's possible to, like, not think she's real. Yeah, it's a kind of freedom. Ronnie's kind of like uh, if if God was real in our world, you know. Um, well, we most a lot of people don't believe in God. Huge people don't believe in God. And it's it's hard to prove. You wouldn't be able to prove that God is real. So Ronnie's ending is like that. There there is an order, um, and she is real, but you wouldn't be able to sense it. You wouldn't be able to discern it, and proving that it exists would be difficult. That's the kind of order that she's trying to establish. I wish I could kill Ronnie in the DLC. So do I, actually. I think that would... Oh, that would be really good. That'd be wonderful. Oh, man, I never even thought of that. Being able to fight Ronnie... Being able to fight Ronnie as a boss battle, that would be excellent. Stop, this is blasphemy. I think she would be a really cool boss fight. No, it would give you an opportunity to simp even more. You know, they'd make her model bigger. She wouldn't be the same size. They'd make her whole model puppet thing larger. Like they do with all the bosses that you fight. Where Where's Vare? You seek violence. Heedless of my warning, though you have been raised to a knight of the dynasty, I am pain to the very depths of my being. I'll ensure you regret this, Lankin. Enjoy your miserable death.
You want to fight Melana too? Melana would be a cool fight as well. Oh, luminary Moog. Please grant the strength you promised. I have given. Please. Please. <laughs> Bless the Moog wind. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's messed up. It's messed up we can't fight Ronnie. I want to fight Ronnie. She would be a very good boss battle. She could be also one of those boss battles that talks in the middle of boss fights. Those are my favorite. Uh, Osiris in Dark Souls 3 I don't think was a very good boss. He was okay. Uh, but he was made a lot better because his dialogue, you know, functioned. You could talk to him. Okay, here's that thing. Owl's Dialogue, yes. That was another good one. Wow. Bosses are better when they talk, and here comes Mikalash with this Teoch. <laughs> you know, Mikalash was an interesting boss fight, uh, but he was made... Even if you didn't like the mechanics of the boss fight, he was made a lot more tolerable because he talked. He talked real good. <sighs> you know what, we'll have to do this next time. I am hungry. I'm starved. I need to go eat. We'll cut it short here, fellas. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. Goodbye, Antos. Goodbye, Fisty Baby. Goodbye, Alejandro. See ya.